Odometry comes about because for robot applications, it's required to know the current position in space. For example, if we want to send a robot to a goal spot, then we need to know its current spot in order to serve other robot to make up the difference from its current to the goal. One way of estimating the robot position is to use the wheel displacements, and that is known as odometry. The process here begins with the constraint equation from the wheels, and C is a matrix. We can think of it as comprising the coefficients from the wheel constraint equations. In the top block, we're going to let uh, be made up of the coefficients from the rolling constraint equations and the bottom block of C would be the coefficients from the no sliding constraint equations. Psi dot R is the robot velocity in the robot frame. W is a diagonal matrix comprising the wheel radii. Phi dot is a vector of wheel speeds and then the zero vector has a length um, that's the same as however many no sliding constraint equations you have. So, to perform odometry, we rearrange this matrix or this equation to solve for psi dot r, and that's given by this. And to keep it general, we use the pseudo inverse of the matrix C, that's given by this equation, and that is because C is generally going to be rectangular. So we'll assume that there that the robot parameters are such that there is a solution, psi dot r. So this equation will say that it uh, gives a solution and not just a least squares fit. In order to perform odometry, since, we're going, since we control the robot with a digital computer, we're going to have to replace velocities with small displacements. So wheel displacements would be the change in encoder readings from one time step to the next. So we will say that the change in the Cartesian position is approximately equal to the pseudo inverse of C um, times this vector and we've replaced phi dot with delta phi. So that would be the change as it's a vector of the changes in wheel positions. Now that we have the displacement in the robot frame we want to get, well our ultimate goal is to get the current inertial frame position. And we do that by just adding to the previous position the transformed Cartesian displacement. So here our notation says that the position in the inertial frame at time k is equal to the position in the inertial frame at time k minus 1 plus uh, the rotation inverse rotation matrix times the displacement and psi r k would be given by this vector so here's the definition of it it's delta r time k delta r or delta x r delta y r and delta theta all at time k and that's found using uh, delta phi at time k which is the difference between the current wheel position and the previous wheel position and one other thing that's uh, introduced here, one other new notation, bit of notation, is this theta at k minus, and that is the average theta um, f between the previous time step, so k minus 1, and the current time step, and it's given by this equation, so it's theta at k minus 1 plus 1 half delta theta k. And the reason that we want to use this rotation matrix is that, in general, the robot is rotating from one time step to the next and whenever we transform this displacement we want to use the average angle theta so that we have a more accurate representation or more accurate values for delta x uh, for x i and y i here's an example we have a robot with two wheels, and here are the values for alpha and beta, which locate those wheels. And that ends up just being this configuration that we have shown here. So the wheels are on the y-axis, and they roll in the x-direction. And for this robot, we have the dimension L is 125 millimeters, and the wheel radii are 35 millimeters. So we want to perform odometry for this, and we're given the robot inertial frame position at the previous time step 
So that was 180, we'll say millimeters in the x direction, 225 in the y direction, and at an angle theta of 0.7 radians. We also have measured the wheel displacements. So for wheel one, it's, um, and that's th this wheel here, the wheel is turned 0.25 radians. And for wheel two, it's turned 0.09 radians. And now we want to figure out what is the current position in the inertial frame. So we will start by getting the displacement, Cartesian displacement. So we'll use the matrix C and the wheel radii for W and the displacements to get this vector. But anyway, back to C. Computing the coefficients for the constraint equations gives us this matrix for C. 1, 0, 125, 1, 0, negative 125, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 0. And we take the pseudo inverse of that matrix, multiply it by W times delta phi. So here we have the radius times the displacement for wheel 1, radius times the displacement for wheel 2, and then zeros to go along with these no sliding equations. The result of that multiplication is 5.075 millimeters in the x direction, none in the robot y direction, which fits with our no sliding constraint, and a rotation change of 0.0224 radians. We need to transform that into the inertial frame and add it to the previous inertial frame position to get the current position. In order to transform that Cartesian displacement from robot frame to the inertial frame, we want to use the average angle theta. So that's theta k minus, and it's, again, here's the definition, theta k minus 1 plus 1 half delta theta k. For this example, that turns out to be 0.7 plus 1 half 0.0224, so we end up with this value that we're going to use in our rotation matrix. And here is the numerical values for that rotation matrix. And we're ready now to get the answer. We just want to sum the previous position and the transform displacement to get the inertial frame coordinates at the current time. Here's the coordinates at the previous time, the rotation matrix, and we want to take the inverse of that since we're going from the robot frame to the inertial frame, and the Cartesian displacement in the robot frame. And so we end up with 185 in the x direction, 229 in the y, and 0.722 radians for our Cartesian position in the inertial frame.